G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for my round 7 footy tips. Again, apologies, I'm recording this before the round has actually completed. I'm on holiday and I'm in America and uh, my schedule isn't as flexible as I'd once have hoped. So I kind of rigidly got to stick to, you know, recording the same videos on the same days. So unfortunately this is the odd round where there's a couple of games out of whack that uh, I'll have to record my footy tips before seeing them. So the two Anzac Day clashes, the Anzac Day Eve and then Collingwood and Essendon. Haven't seen the games yet, but I'm going to have a crack anyway. It was a tricky round of tipping in round six. Again, it hasn't finished yet, so I can't announce the weekly winners and stuff like that. So again, that will have to be put to the back burner for just another week. Sorry, guys. But I'm currently sitting on four out of seven correct tips, and the ones I got wrong, I got dramatically wrong. So I tipped North to beat the Gold Coast Suns. I tipped Sydney to upset Geelong at GMHBA, and I got that one woefully wrong. And I had a bit of a punt on the Hawks to beat the Adelaide Footy Club in Tasmania, which didn't pay off, unfortunately. So four out of seven. But I'm hoping Melbourne and Collingwood get the job done to give me an even six. But once again, the round ahead does uh, provide some interesting games coming up. St Kilda, Port Adelaide in particular. Essendon played Geelong this week and Adelaide versus Collingwood again will be a very tasty clash. I'm liking that term tasty right now. So in today's video, of course, without squiggle this time, I'm going to be taking you through the nine games ahead. As you know by now, I am trying to increase the amount of people who watch the True Footy YouTube channel who are actually subscribed to the channel and it appears that over the last 28 days we've actually trended in the wrong direction with 43% of people who watch the videos have not actually hit subscribe yet. So if you could do us a favor and take two seconds to just hit subscribe if you're enjoying the content, it would be much appreciated. First game of the round is that game I mentioned between St Kilda and Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. This would be an interesting one. St Kilda are coming off a five day break, which is uh, worth mentioning, although they don't have to travel. Uh, last week, getting the job done against Carlton in a game that was uh, pretty even for the first two and a half quarters. And again, it was still a pretty even game across the board, but St Kilda prevailing to win that game by four goals. The defensive structures look fantastic. Down back, they've got Wilkie and Battle in particular getting the job done. Sinclair run and carry off the back line. But most importantly, they've only conceded an average of something like 59.8 points per game, holding Carlton to 60 last week as well. So defensively, they're a hard nut to crack, and this will be a big ask for Port Adelaide, who have returned to form a little bit after their couple of shaky losses in rounds two and three. They got the job done over West Coast. I don't know how much you can take out of that game. West Coast are obviously not strong. Injury depleted a little bit at the moment in terms of player availability. But I think we saw the, all the right things from Port Adelaide and a seven goal win over West Coast on current form is about right. The Saints though were a very very tough ask for Port Adelaide in this game having just dropped the one game against Collingwood by six points in Adelaide last weekend so while Port Adelaide's form has indicated to me they're on the right track They've beaten Sydney in Sydney. This game is winnable, but you have to go with St Kilda, I think, in this game, who have given us no reason not to tip them. I think defensively, they'll be too strong for Port Adelaide. It'll be a low-scoring game, as it typically is, and I expect a 13-point win to the Saints. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions and Fremantle at the Gabba, which is a game of 5th versus 13th. And at the start of the year, you thought this might be a top-of-the-table clash, or at least maybe not top-of-the-table, but two top six teams you'd expect. But Fremantle have had a very average start to the year. Brisbane got the job done over GWS last week. Recorded a 21-point victory, I think. Charlie Cameron was monstrous with seven goals. they got a lot of different contributors running through that midfield at the moment. And they're a little bit slicker than the Giants in that game, which uh, ultimately was the difference between them winning and losing. Fremantle, on the other hand, they have looked pretty increasingly poor this year with uh, probably their worst loss of the year last week against the Bulldogs going down by something like 49 points, I think it was, at home conceding 118 points for a team that is notoriously strong on their defense, or at least that was a hallmark of their team last year. Pound for pound right now, Fremantle should have no right to win this game. But what are, the, the caveat I'll add to that is I think they're a pretty strong Gabba side. And with so much scrutiny on them at the moment, they'll be a you know they'll be demanding a response. So I actually think we'll see an improved Fremantle performance in this game, but they shouldn't really get anywhere near beating Brisbane. So I'll say the Lions win this game by probably four goals, but I don't think it will be a smashing. I think it'll be a lot closer than Fremantle and the Bulldogs. Then we've got the Battle of the Bridge between Sydney and GWS, Sydney's home game at the SCG. And on paper again, this is, uh, well, on paper actually, it's a lot more even than it once would have been with Sydney's injury situation at the moment. But the Swans have dropped a 10th as well on the back of some pretty poor losses in recent weeks. Last week, getting rolled by 93 points against the reigning Premier down in Geelong, which 
you know, regardless of the injury situation, isn't a great result. They obviously, on the one hand, weren't quite equipped to deal with the star power that Geelong have, but at the same time, any time you lose by 93 points, suggests that their head wasn't really in that game to begin with. So this is a little bit more of an even playing field than it looked maybe three weeks ago. The Giants as well have been pretty gallant in defeat in a number of weeks across this year. They haven't really had too many games, or if any, where they looked like a genuine bottom two side, although I've even said that I probably see them as a bottom four side this year, but I think the bottom four is fairly competitive this year, and therefore the Giants are not without their chances of catching Sydney napping here. They do also have a knack for upsetting Sydney when you don't expect them to. I'm still going to tip Sydney in this game, but they do have some issues. They've got some vulnerabilities. They've got some issues with availability of players. Their back line's depleted, but GWS's forward line doesn't strike the same fear into them as much as Certainly a Geelong, obviously. Toby Green will be one to watch. Obviously, he's going to have his trademark two, three goals and 22 possessions. If they can limit his influence, that will go a long way to winning the game. I still will tip Sydney here. I'm not brave enough to tip the Giants, but it's 10th versus 12th, and we could see a good game of footy. So I'll tip Sydney by 25 points. Then we've got the Western Bulldogs versus Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium. The Bulldogs coming off that resounding victory against Fremantle. They look like they've gotten their groove back a little bit. It's been an improved month of footy since their 51-point loss to St Kilda, which at the time looked terrible. And at right now, St Kilda looking like one of the better sides in the competition. So maybe that wasn't so shameful as it once looked. But even still, in the last four, they've had a 14-point win over Brisbane. They've beaten Richmond in a good game in the wet. They lost to Port Adelaide in tight circumstances. Again, it was pissing down for the second week in a row and then they smash Fremantle in Perth so I think we're seeing a little bit of momentum here for the Western Bulldogs Hawthorne have put together a couple of good weeks in a row like I said narrow loss to the Giants narrow loss to Adelaide the Giants play some okay footy Adelaide a very good team at the moment so again showing they're not that far off the pace and as the bottom seeded team in the competition right now they are certainly not without their chances of making this a good game and the Bulldogs have this knack of playing well and then letting themselves down with a disappointing loss so there's potential for that here but on current form I'm not going to tip Hawthorne the Bulldogs with led by Marcus Bontempelli in particular who's in fantastic form should win this game and I'll tip them to win it by 43 points. Then we've got Melbourne versus North Melbourne at the MCG on what I think is Saturday night. Sorry, the time zones are a little bit different. My app will say that it's 5.25 a.m. Demons, of course, have not played uh, in the recent round yet. So by the time this comes out, they may or may not have played, but their last game was a disappointing four-goal loss to Essendon down in Adelaide. But before that, the body of work that they've shown, the star power that they have, makes me think that they're still a good team. So I'm not too concerned by that loss in isolation and certainly not concerned enough to have too many doubts about this game. In fact, the odds are paying $1.06 for Melbourne to win and North Melbourne are out at $9.50. North Melbourne started the year really well. They've come crashing down to reality a little bit against the Gold Coast Suns with that uh, eight goal loss, I think it was in the end, so maybe seven. Some of their more uh, dangerous plays in that game were sort of curtailed LDU, Sheasel, even Zerha didn't have the same impact that he had in previous weeks. So perhaps North need to find a way to manage to impact the contest where some of their better players aren't delivering for them. So that will take time. It's a long-term journey here for North Melbourne. I don't really give them too much of a chance in this game. This would be one of the more shocking results of the year so far if North win. I think the odds are about right. Melbourne should win this by eight goals on current form. G'day guys, sorry for interrupting this part of the video, but I just wanted to take a moment in the middle of the video to talk to you a little bit about Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, we'd like to hear from those of you out there who are new to the gym and perhaps feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Starting a fitness journey can be daunting, especially if you're new to the gym. There's a few obstacles that gym beginners will generally struggle with early on. It's poor form and technique, not having a plan, and not knowing what food to eat as well. But thankfully, there is a much better way to get started at the gym, and Druzy's Athlete Academy is all you need to begin your fitness journey. Take out the guesswork of being a beginner and follow a program that guarantees results. Druzy is a qualified exercise scientist and strength and conditioning coach for footballers. One-on-one -on -one coaching with Druzy will allow you to ensure that you're training properly whilst also keeping you accountable and motivating you. He helps teenagers and young men try to gain muscle and strength, build a better physique, and feel more confident, energized, and motivated. Don't go to the gym blindfolded, take out the guesswork, and with Druzy's Athlete Academy, you can make your goals a reality. Through True Footy, you can get 20% off on any of the programs that Druzy is offering by two ways. You can either go to the website, druzysathleteacademy.com, and when you check out, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, or you can simply DM Druzy's Athlete Academy on Instagram, TRUEFOOTY20, for more information. Thanks for your time, guys. Let's get back to the video. 
then we have a Saturday night blockbuster between the West Coast Eagles and Carlton. I always make a joke at my own expense when it comes to the Eagles, but they've played some encouraging football this year. Last week, the power got a hold of the Eagles in the first half, kind of put the contest to bed, and then what has been typical of the Eagles in some of these losses, uh, they put together a much better second half and uh, you know curtailed the margin to just 40 points in the end. There's some injury issues at West Coast. Again, we've, they're well documented, and if you want my in-depth thoughts, I did a whole video about it last week on the channel. But it means we're picking for about 23 or 24 available players. So my hopes for beating Carlton are not high. And Carlton are in a bit of a stinky patch of form, obviously. The big loss in Adelaide uh, to Adelaide, and then a four-goal less loss to St Kilda again. St Kilda are one of the better teams in the comp right now. So even still, I think Carlton's form has dipped. In this game, can West Coast give them really any issues? Well, I look at that midfield in particular and uh, it's going to be far too strong for a pretty undermanned West Coast midfield at the moment which isn't strong to begin with. Walsh is back in the side now and Mackay and Kerno were not massive factors in that game against St Kilda by any stretch. In fact they looked a little bit predictable looking for them in the forward line too often but West Coast back line at the moment is pretty much Tom Barras and then some makeshift key defenders uh, playing that role. So you combine the midfield battle, you combine the talls are probably going to get a hold of us. Carlton should win this game. I'm not actually so confident in them that they'll even beat us by as much as seven goals. I think it'll be closer than that. I think West Coast has the potential to put in a good fight and they've been playing three quarters of games lately. If they can put in a four quarter effort, this game will be tight. So I'll tip Carlton by 19 points. I think we have, will have a much better West Coast performance in this game. They're catching Carlton at a good time, but I'm certainly not gonna tip the Eagles, that would be silly. So Carlton by 19 points. Then we've got Essendon and the Cats at the MCG on Saturday night. This will be a good game. Essendon are in great form at the moment. Again, recording this video before Essendon's played in the Anzac Day Clash, which we might be revealing if they get pumped, then uh, obviously that's a bit of a reality check for them and if they beat Collingwood that will influence my tip for this game so tipping a little bit blind here but there's no doubt they've played some really good footy despite having injury issues themselves like St Kilda second or third on the ladder right now the midfield is strong they found a way to answer some of the forward line questions with some of their players their best forwards are uh, not available throughout this season so far but they're coming up against Geelong who might have got their shit together with three massive wins on the trot last week against the Sydney Swans, admittedly a depleted Sydney Swans, but because we know and trust Geelong, them getting some big wins against some average teams, or at least average teams on current form, is enough for me to think, oh shit, they're probably back. So they're also at an interesting stage of the year where they're three and three. They're at a point where if they want to compete for the premiership, they can't have too many more off days after a poor start to the season. So with all that being said, uh, again, I'm tipping blind here without Essendon knowing how they go in Anzac Day. But I'm going to tip Geelong here because of the form they've found themselves back in. I think it'll be too much for Essendon to handle at the MCG. So Geelong will win this game by 28 points. Then we've got uh, what is actually a potentially interesting game between Richmond and the Gold Coast Suns at Marvel Stadium, which is currently 16th versus 14th. So with all the narrative about Gold Coast being disappointing to start this year, Richmond sit below them on the ladder right now. Admittedly, they've played one less game. I should acknowledge that. But I don't think they'll beat Melbourne. So on paper, Richmond should be much stronger than their opponent. I think they've done a good job of filtering in some youth this year. They've been, there's been plenty of exposure, particularly to some young forwards in that side. And they're definitely going through a transition here. But we wouldn't have expected Richmond to be just on six points after six rounds, assuming they lose to Melbourne at this point of the season. So Gold Coast have the ability to make this game awkward for Richmond because Richmond have not demonstrated so much this year that they're capable of really putting teams away. They had a big burst against the Bulldogs. I remember that. That was fantastic. And then they went to sleep again, or at least they'd gone to sleep previously. And then the Bulldogs obviously managed to hold on for that three-point win or whatever it was. They had a really good first half against Adelaide and then failed to really put that game away and it got closer than it probably should have been for a little while there anyway. So I'm not confident in Richmond at the moment. I do think they will win this game, but even without Took Miller, I think Gold Coast have the ability to match it with them for much of this game on current form. And if Richmond lose this, that will be diabolical for their season. Certainly not sack Hardwick levels of, of panic just yet, but when you traded in two top line midfielders, acknowledging you're still going through a transition, this season would be ruined if they lose this game. So on that logic, I think they'll eke out a mediocre win here and I'll say Richmond win this game by 26 points but I'm hoping for a good game then finally a great game to end the round we've got Adelaide and Collingwood at Adelaide Oval on a Sunday afternoon and uh, as it currently stands on the ladder which has not changed for the Anzac Day games yet uh, this is a top four clash fourth versus third I think it'll be fifth versus second or third or whatever but either way two good sides at the moment the Crows have won four on the bounce getting over the line against the Hawks yes that game is probably closer than it could have been on paper but 
Hawthorne played pretty well. Adelaide, historically bad in Tasmania. They've notched up four points. And the body of work they've put together, pretty much since the second half of that game against Richmond, where they came back, they look bloody strong. So at home as well, where Adelaide have been really strong this year, and they are a red-hot chance in this game. They've got the firepower to beat Collingwood. This is probably their toughest ask of the season so far in terms of who they've played. They've had some really good wins, obviously. Smashing Carlton. They did lose to Richmond. They beat Port Adelaide, who look like they'll probably settle somewhere in the top eight this year as well. So there's certainly a strong chance to win this game. Well, we haven't seen Collingwood's form against Essendon, and it will be a five-day break as well for the Pies here as well. So this far out, I am going to tip Collingwood, but again, reserve judgment for see how they go against Essendon. Obviously, there's things like injuries to consider as well but Collingwood are the stronger side and despite Adelaide's form I think this is where they come unstuck they won't win five in a row Collingwood will win this game by 16 points but it could be a doozy it could be a real match of the round contender all right guys that is all my thoughts on the round seven tips let me know in the comments what you agree with what you disagree with uh, how you're going in your tipping competition as well and what's your game of the round this week I'll say Adelaide versus Collingwood as always guys I appreciate your support thanks to all the new subscribers who have jumped on board and for now I'll say goodbye I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.